Hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation on a framework to assess publicness in multicultural streets. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for providing the opportunity to present in the 54th International Conference of the Architectural Science Association 2020. Public space is the domain of interest for urban designers, and streets are one of the most relevant forms of public space. In multicultural societies, public space users come from a diverse range of social and ethnic backgrounds with varying interests and needs. Therefore, streets should act as inclusive spaces that are intended for use by a broader public. While the streets may be public, to what extent is there publicness that plays a significant role in promoting multiculturalism? In this paper, we aim to develop a framework for assessing publicness in streets in multicultural societies. In other words, it responds to the question of what constitutes a good and ideal model of publicness regarding cultural diversity of streets in multicultural societies. Public spaces are known as the theater of everyday life, where individuals and groups can observe and encounter other people beyond their normal circle of acquaintances, people who might have different costumes, behaviors, and cultures. In this regard, good quality public spaces are known as spaces that are multicultural, where ethnically and culturally diverse groups can coexist peacefully. In diverse multicultural societies, the design of public space becomes more challenging. Since people from different ethnicity, age groups, and socioeconomic backgrounds have special space requirements for their preferred activities, and symbols are neither fixed nor shared between different cultures. Streets and their sidewalks represent an important part of urban public open space systems and have a significant role in enriching public life of cities. Streets can provide a means for sociability, including a range of passive and active encounters. Therefore, as with other urban public spaces, streets can be places to encounter differences to educate and learn about different viewpoints, to tolerate and resolve conflict. The term democratic street was first coined by Mark Francis in the field of urban design. Francis defines democratic streets as streets that are well used, have meaning for people and invite access for all. He argues the fact that street democracy grows out of the concept of publicness. Now what is publicness? Publicness is a quality that evaluates the public character of public spaces. Publicly accessible places are well, where all members of the public engage in different types of activities. Now the question is how do streets meet the goal of publicness in multicultural societies? In this presentation, I will develop a framework for assessing publicness in streets in multicultural societies. The proposed model gives a new insight into the assessment of multicultural streets. Scholars have developed specific dimensions to assess and evaluate the publicness of public spaces. These dimensions are slightly different, although there is a high degree of congruence among them and with definitions of public space as this term includes the concept of publicness. The study builds on the dimensions of publicness described by previous models and adjusts it to the street environment. The four central dimensions of publicness include ownership, accessibility, management, and inclusiveness. But streets are considered as a space in municipal ownership and as an area that is open and accessible to the general public. Therefore, this study contributes to the ongoing discussion on publicness alongside its other important dimensions, such as accessibility, management, and diversity or inclusiveness. 
One of the essential qualities of public space, which is basic to its use, is accessibility. It's one of the fundamental dimensions of publicness. The question is that what makes a neighborhood street more accessible for different ethnic groups residing in the community? Spatial barriers is not an issue for obstructing community access in neighborhood commercial streets. The openness of public spaces should not only be limited to physical accessibility, but also should include social accessibility, which means having access to the place and to the activities within it. Therefore, socio-symbolic accessibility could be related to the social behavior and activities that a place accommodates, as well as their symbolic, communicative, and meaningful features. Symbolic access concerns the presence of visual symbols and cues in the form of individuals and groups of people or design elements affecting an entrance to public space. Particular design elements, for example, certain shop frontages, act as a symbolic signage and cues suggesting the type of people who are welcomed. Ethnicity and economic disparity are often tied together in the formation of ethnic minorities. Therefore, socioeconomic circumstances play an important role for leisure participation among ethnic minority groups in public spaces. Economic access is another form of access to public spaces which is most common in quasi-public spaces such as cinemas or theatres and less common in public parks or civic spaces. This type of access can exclude some groups of society by charging entry fees. However, there are also other, more indirect ways people can be kept out, such as the way space is organized, suggesting that consumption is a prerequisite for access. Also, the type of shops and activities may be both inviting and repelling to the public. For example, the presence of affordable shops, eating places, Vendors may act as a signage that welcomes the general public. On the other hand, the presence of expensive shops and cafes has the potential to alter the sense of place leading to a luxury and prosperous atmosphere and therefore um, orienting towards more affluent and middle class users, excluding users with lower socioeconomic status. Management of public spaces may control freedom of use, access, and behavior. First of all, retail tenant mix is the most significant factor in attracting people to a street. In multicultural streets, the familiar and unfamiliar together shape the environment. Therefore, having a right mixture of activities on the street that support a wide range of necessary, optional, and social activities for different cultural groups is critical for streets to become more public. The management and the operation of a street's retail spaces could also be an important factor in terms of political representation and social accessibility, representing different ethnic groups in the social and cultural characteristics of premises is an important aspect to retain a meaningful place for people of various backgrounds and help streets become more multicultural. Inclusiveness is one of the main dimensions of publicness. The percentages of each ethnic group participating in different activities of a street could be recorded and compared with the percentages of each ethnic group residing in the relative neighborhood. Similarly, the range of activities of each group can be used to measure how each street serves different ethnic groups, whether each ethnic group visits the street alone or in groups, and their types of activities is an indicator on how well each group perceives the street environment as a social space. Well, this table summarizes different dimensions in a multicultural street that make it more or less public. The central dimensions affecting publicness are accessibility, management, and inclusiveness, each of which having their specific definitions. Based on this framework, we can study different streets or different sections of a street and compare them together for being more or less public to a broader range of ethno-cultural groups. 
the end, I would like to thank you for your attention.